Hello 1P, welcome back. We're talking about order of operations today. Our goal, I know which order I must do mathematical operations in a math expression, and I know what BEDMAS stands for. So order of operations, I'm first going to try and convince you that we actually need to know this. Why do we need an order for our mathematical operations? So we here we have Harvey and Larry. Harvey and Larry are hard at work in their math books and they're both doing the same question. So what question are they doing? This one. What is 6 plus 3 times 4? Well, Harvey decides to do it in the order that it's written. He takes 6 and he adds 3 and he gets 9. So that's this part here. And now he's going to do the times 4 and 9 times 4 is 36. Now Larry decides he doesn't want to add first. He's going to multiply first, so he does the 3 times 4 is 12 first, and then adds the 6 from the front to get 18. Well, these are very, very different answers to the same questions. Who is right? Well, the operations that they actually did were both correct. So we have to come up with a standard set of rules to say which one we are going to accept as the right answer, because you know that mathematicians don't like to have more than one right answer to a question if they can at all help it. So who is right? They have performed the operations correctly just in a different order. So mathemati mathematics eventually evolved a set of rules to take care of the differences so that everyone gets the same answer. We use the acrom acronym BEDMAS to remind us of that order. So here's what BEDMAS is. BEDMAS stands for brackets. So if there are any brackets in the question, we start with the brackets. We do the operations within the brackets. And when we're inside a bracket, the, uh, the rest of the orders follow as, follow as well. Uh, e comes next. Brackets, exponents. Exponents are our next order of operation. Then division. Then multiplication. Then addition. And then subtraction. Now, addition and subtraction and multiplication and division are usually lumped together as they are on this next slide. Um, we put division and multiplication together because division and multiplication are interchangeable. We don't, we usually do them in the order that we see them, but it actually doesn't matter what order division and multiplication are done in, we get the same answer. Same goes for addition and subtraction. They're interchangeable as well because we're going to get the same order. So let's pull these out. Solve brackets in order from left to right. So this is what it says. Solve brackets in order from left to right. Second point, solve exponents in order from left to right. Multiply and divide in order from left to right, although it's not as, um, as bad with multiplying and dividing. And the same thing, add and subtract in order from left to right, although it's not definite that you have to do that with adding and subtracting, and that's why they're lumped together. So let's practice, shall we? Let's practice our bedmas. Bedmas says we do brackets first. So I am going to, first of all, I'm going to take a different color here. And I'm going to do what's in the bracket. So I leave this 56 divided by. Now please notice the way I write this down. I am going to expect that you show me every single step. And I'm going to expect that you write it down properly. So we put the 56 divided by there. And then we just work on this first part. The 12 minus 4. And 12 minus 4 of course is 8. And then I'm going to write out the rest of it. Plus 3 times 4 minus 8. Now the bracket that I put here isn't actually doing anything. I don't need it there anymore. So I can just erase it out of there. And now order of operations tells me that I have to do exponents. There are no exponents in this question, so I carry on and I do division and multiplication in any order I see it. Well, I see this division and I see this multiplication, and they can both be done on the same step. 56 divided by 8 is 7, and then 3 times 4 is 12, and then I have this minus 8 on the end that wasn't affected in this round. 
and now I can do this in the order that I see it or in any order that I want. Usually we work from left to right, so let's do it in a couple of steps. 7 plus 12 is 19, and then we're going to put that minus 8 down there, and 19 minus 8 is 11. So our final answer is 11. Next question tells us we need to do brackets first, so brackets is the only thing I'm working on, so I'm going to write everything else down the way it appears. And then this 3 plus 9 is 12, and so I'm going to put 12 in instead of this bracket. Uh, that's what I was working on. I knew this was 12, so I'm going to replace that whole bracket with a 12, and then divide it by 4. Now next order of operation tells us to do exponents. Since there are no exponents, I move on and do division or multiplication. Well, here's a multiplication and here's a division, and we do them in the order that we come to them from left to right in the question. So I'm going to do those, and those can both be done on the same line. The 17 doesn't get worked on in this round, but 3 times 5 is 15, so I've got 17 minus 15 plus 12 divided by 4 is 3. And now we're going to do this in the order that we see it. 17 minus 15 is 2, and then that plus 3 didn't get worked on this round, but it will in the last round to give us a 5. Next question. Here we go again. Brackets first. Here's our set of brackets. So we're going to do that. We know that that bracket evaluates to 6. So when I write this down, I'm going to write everything down exactly the way it is, except the brackets where I'm going to put my answer. And my answer for 2 plus 4 is 6, and then minus 4. Now, let's pick out exponents. Again, there aren't any exponents, so we're going to do division and multiplication. So here's a multiplication. Uh, here's a division and a multiplication, so we can do that whole string of them in this step. So I'm going to do 2 times 8 is 16, minus, and then 4 divided by 2. We're going to do this in the order we see it. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and then my answer of 2, I'm going to times by 6, so I get 12. And then I'm going to do minus 4. 16 subtract 12 is 4, and then we have minus 4, and we get a grand answer of 0 for this question. Okay. Now notice the way I wrote this down. When I wrote it down, I wrote everything down that I wasn't working on, and then just the piece that I worked on, I replaced with the answer. I didn't break it up into a whole bunch of little parts. Okay, calculator riddles. What the heck is that? Let's have some fun. Here are some calculator riddles that can be solved on your calculator. Follow the correct order of operations. Be sure to do every step in your, calcul in your notebook. Then when you have the final answer, turn your calculator over to get the answer to the riddle. Okay, let's have a look at this one. The riddle says, how do you feel on Monday morning? Okay, this is a pretty simple order of operations question. We have to do multiplication first. There's no brackets or exponents, so we do multiplication. So 27 times 34, and that's a big one. I don't expect you to do it without your calculator. 27 times 34 is 918 and we're going to subtract 147. So 918 subtract 147 gives us 771. And 771, if we turn that upside down, it tells us that on Monday morning we feel ill. Ill on Monday mornings. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel ill on Monday mornings. I could use an extra little bit of sleep. Okay, so sometimes you can't just see it on your on your paper. You have to actually look at it on your calculator. But that looks like it says ill. Okay, next question. Oh, this is a biggie. And there are some brackets. It says, "How do you feel most Monday afternoons?" Well, let's have a look. What do we do first here? Well, we have to do brackets, so we do everything. we got to get a final answer inside this bracket before we divide by 1,000. So we're going to take a look at this bracket. 
uh, when we go inside the bracket, we have to follow order of operations. And since there's no other brackets and there's no exponents, we're looking at multiplication. So here's some multiplication. And here's some division. So let's have a look. Uh, I'm going to pull up my calculator on my screen here. And we do 312 times 97. So 312 times 97. And we write that down. That is 30,264. So 30,264. Now we have to do 14,229 divided by 3. 14,229 divided by 3 is 4,743. So we do plus 4,000, what, what was that again? 743, 743. And now this part didn't get worked on, so I just put minus 34,502 divided by 1,000. So now this is still in brackets, so we have to take the final answer in those brackets, and I'm going to pull my calculator up again, and that says 30,264. We're going to add to that 4,743, and then subtract 34,502. And the answer we get is 505. And now that's the answer for this big bracket. So now we can divide by 1,000. And when I divide by 1,000, divide by 1,000, I get 0 0.505. So how do you feel most Monday afternoons? Let's flip this over. So-so. Uh, you feel so-so on Monday afternoons. So those are calculator riddles. Now you have a whole bunch more, a handout page of calculator riddles that I want you to do in your workbooks. You don't have to do the whole page, but I want you to do at least 10 of the calculator riddles, and hopefully some of you will do more. Um, so do them in your notebooks. And if you're having trouble, if your answer, you flip the calculator, calculator over and it doesn't make any sense, when you're working on these, you need to call me over and see where you went wrong. But you have to have it all written down in your notebook, because if you don't have it all written down in your notebook, I won't be able to see where you went wrong. So you need to put down step by step by step how you did these. Don't just punch them all into your calculator, because then I won't be able to see where you made your mistake. So that is order of operations, ladies and gentlemen, um, and that's it for today.